Hey everyone, I'm Marcos and I'm Moxie Boosted, and welcome back to a very exciting video. Now, I am going to have another upload today. It's going to be a Intimidator tier list for VGC 2020. But speaking of VGC 2020, I mean, we're always talking about VGC on this channel. That's literally what the channel is about. But the official rule set has been announced, and I'm excited to bring you guys some of the details. Uh, the links to everything are going to be in the description, the official rule set document, and even this page on the Pokemon website that you can skim over if you want to get familiar with all the little details, because there are a couple of really interesting things happening this season. Uh, but I'll be discussing them today, and as for the comment question of the day, I'm going to start implementing that. Uh, I want to know what Gigantamax Pokemon you think is going to be the best, because... Gigantamax Pokemon have just been confirmed to be legal, but in a weird, there's a weird caveat to that, but we'll go over that. Let's go ahead and start with the overview here. All battles will be double battles played in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Thank God I did not want to play single battles on Sword and Shield in a Dynamax format. Uh, that would be extremely, extremely like, just, just broken. There are lots of things that could go wrong. You just... Each player will need their own Nintendo Switch or Nintendo Switch Lite and a physical or digital copy of Pokemon Sword and Shield to compete. That's kind of a given. Pokemon will need to have the Galar symbol showing they were caught in the Galar region. Now, that's always been pretty standard with VGC. It makes it so things like uh, Pokemon that had old moves that were kind of broken won't be allowed in the next format. For example, it's still possible to get... Um, well, no, not anymore, but... Dark Void Smeargle was in the... VGC 2016 and 2015 formats, right? Which is really problematic because it's able to get off a really powerful, you know, dark void and put two things to sleep in the field with like, I think it was 80% chance. But while they did nerf it to the point where dark void was 50% on dark cry and Smeargle was, was unable to use it, it also made it so you couldn't even use dark void Smeargle in the next format of VGC being VGC 2017 where Smeargle was legal. You had to have that Smeargle obtained in game and yeah, also things like knockoff Bisharp will not be legal because Bisharp lost knockoff this gen and I believe its best dark stab is going to be throat chop. So that's kind of cool. I mean, it's nothing new, but it is something that's, you know, cool if you guys didn't know that about VGC. All Pokemon from the Galar region Pokedex will be permitted except for mythical Pokemon and certain legendary Pokemon. Now, we actually... We actually don't know what the mythical Pokemon are yet because they haven't been distributed. So uh, in the future, that'll be important. And certain legendary Pokemon. That is interesting. I'm pretty sure that just means Sil Valley and Type Null because those are the only two legendaries I would expect to be legal considering there are three in the game. Oh no, there are four in the game if you don't count Type Null because we have Eternatus, Zazamenta, Zacian, or Zamazenta and Zacian. And then we have the Type Null line. And Type Null is, for some reason, considered a legendary. I've never really considered it one, but it is. So I'm assuming that's the only legendary Pokemon that's going to be legal. Uh, as for the next rule, uh, all Pokemon will be set to level 50, including Pokemon below level 50. So that's just so you don't need to grind them up to level 50. It's a nice time saver, even though in Sword and Shield, it's already kind of you know fast to level up with the candies. Stupidly, Pokemon will not be allowed. Now... Specifically, that uh, means Pokemon with the same Pokedex number. So you can't run Rotom Heat and then Rotom Mo, which they go over that specifically in the rule document, which I'll go to in a minute. Each timer will have a 90 second, or each battle will begin with a 90 second preview phase. That's kind of standard. It's just so you can look at each other's teams. We have it online already. Players will have 7 minutes of your time, 45 seconds of move time, and now returning to VGC. I like how they have that right there because they know that some people really hated it. 15 minutes of game time each battle. Now this is huge because while some people have a different opinion on this, I personally don't like game time. It makes it so um, it makes it so you can stall out the game a bit. You can use move like you can click in your moves really fast, right? And you don't lose as much of your time, the chess timer. However, you can stall out the game timer by using moves with really long animations, and you can even like use things like Gigantamax or Dynamax to make things take even longer. So if you're in a position where you're winning, you can just start uh, stalling out game timer by, you know, taking forever to click your moves, uh, choosing moves that have long animations, and overall just putting yourself in a position where you can stall out that game timer and let yourself win because you have more Pokemon with more HP. Uh, well, this wasn't this wasn't a thing in VGC 2017, 2018, or, tw or 2019, uh, and I was a fan of that because it was just, if you run out of time on your timer, you lose, and it wasn't, if you're in a position where you're winning, and you run out of time, then you win, it was, and, and like, in the game runs out of time, you win, so there are some people who will take advantage of that, 
uh, and lots of people will give Wolf Glick, you know, some garbage about that, but it's how the game works. I can't blame them for using it, and there are lots of people who will take advantage of that. I might even take advantage of it. I might put a guide on how to stall out your opponent, <laughs> but yeah, I don't really do that too much. Um, additional restrictions apply to Pokemon capable of Gigantamaxing. While such Pokemon are very rare, there are sometimes opportunities to find them more frequently. For instance, from Friday, November 15th, 2019 until early January 2020, players are more likely to encounter Gigantamax Dreadnought in Pokemon Sword and Shield, er, in Pokemon Sword ra Raid Battles, Gigantamax Corviknight in Pokemon Shield Raid Battles, and Gigantamax Butterfree in both. For either the... <laughs> for either game. The list of the species permitted to Gigantamax will expand every few months based on events in which these Pokemon are more common. The Play Pokemon VG Rules and Formats document on Play Pokemon if Rules and Resource pages will be updated every few months to indicate when these Pokemon are permitted for use. So, hold on, let me read the rest, I guess. Pokemon capable of Gigantamax are not legal until they're included in the Play Pokemon VG Rules Formats document. So this is a living document. It can update, and there are going to be more... Pokemon that become a lot more common. So, here. As of January 4th, 2020, when the format starts, the following Pokemon are uh, only are the only Pokemon with Gigantamax Factor allowed to compete. Butterfree, Corviknight, Dreadnought, Senna, Scorch, Meowth, Pikachu, Eevee, Snorlax, Sandaconda, and Charizard with only the ability Blaze. So let me explain uh, why this is kind of cool. While a lot of Gigantamax Pokemon won't be all that viable, uh, this does make a situation where the format will evolve as the season progresses. We saw it with the hidden abilities of the starters being released in 2018, how all of a sudden Intimidate Incineroar was like the best Pokemon in the game. From that format on, it was in 2018 and 2019, it was the best. Um, and with this, we can see some things become even more viable. Uh, so I'm going to go over some of the you know, G-Max moves, because all that really changes is the appearance of the Pokemon, which doesn't affect stats, and the move they're able to use. There are some that are really, really busted, and some that really aren't that great. Uh, but yeah, as of right now, all these are legal, and as more raids become more common, like there's going to be a season where Gigantamax Charizard's more common, uh, you might be able to use Solar Power, because then it'll be easier to get the Solar Power ability, whereas of right now, he's extremely rare, so you can only use the Gift Charizard with Blaze, essentially. Battles in the Pokemon Video Game Championships will switch to Sword and Shield in just a few weeks, January 4th, 2020, so make sure to prepare your team and check out the Event Locator to find an event near you. Start your trek towards the Pokemon World Championships today. So, the Event Locator I'll also... I think that's already linked in my description. But, uh, yeah. Overall, I think that's kind of a really interesting format. I didn't expect them to make Gigantamax legal, but I guess with that being one of the main gimmicks of the game, they would want it to be showcased. But I do like the way they handled it. It is kind of a pain to hunt for things like... Uh, like Gigantamax, I mean, Toxicity isn't even available yet, I don't think, but like other Gigantamax Pokemon, like just are really hard to find, like Garbodor, uh, it's an extremely rare spawn, so expecting people to, like if Garbodor is one of the best Pokemon, then everyone's going to have to adjust to it and maybe even run Garbodor themselves, so they would have to put in so much time and effort to find it, so I like the way they handled this. But yeah, here are the rules, um, I'll leave these in the description down below, but there isn't too much about this something that is really funny though is that uh <laughs> you can actually get uh, kicked out of a tournament for having an inappropriate league card now they don't really specify what that means but uh they said that numbers are also not subject to this so if you have like a 69 or a 420 you're safe because you can always just deflect to be like oh yeah 69 that's the age i want to die at i don't know uh <laughs> 420 that was my that was my home address i don't know but yeah, it's it's whatever. Um, there are some interesting things. Joy-Con controllers must remain attached to the Nintendo Switch at all times during match play. Players are permitted to bring their own officially licensed wired controller. Uh, wireless controllers are not permitted. So no, you cannot bring your Nintendo Switch Pro controller, which that's kind of disappointing to me because I actually really like this thing. I was expecting to possibly use it. Uh, also, screen peeking is going to be a little bit interesting because it's really hard to screen peek when the Nintendo Switch is no longer like this, you know? But it'll be facing you like this. The screen peeking is a lot more difficult. Uh, with the DS, it was a lot easier. So that's really nice. Um, all these other things are very niche, you know. Uh, headphone use, headphones may be worn by players if they are plugged in directly to their Switch. So, uh, and the headphone wire has to be visible. So no wireless headphones. No one can be like sneaking you information. But yeah, I'm done talking about the rule set for now. Right now, I want to talk about what Gigantamax Pokemon I think are going to be good. 
So let's go down here. This is all, I didn't go through this list beforehand because I want to give my raw interpretation of these things. G-Max Wildfire, a fire type attack used by Charizard. Uh, this move continues to deal damage to the opponent for four turns. I personally don't believe that this move will be all that great. Gigantamax Charizard could be one of the most trash uh, Gigantamax Pokemon you could use because regular Charizard gets the same stats and it is capable of using solar power, which means that it can set up the sun using regular Max Flare and then benefit from that immediately. So G-Max Charizard, F. G-Max Befuddle, a bug type attack used by Gigantamax Butterfree. Uh, this move inflicts poison, paralyze, or sleep status on the opponents. Now that one I believe is actually gonna be really, really dangerous. Uh, while I don't think that a lot of people are gonna be running Butterfree because of how frail it is and how it isn't the strongest special attacker, that move could deal a lot of important statuses to your opponent. You could possibly get a, uh, a paralysis on a really fast Pokemon like Dragapult and have that win you the game. So while I think a lot of people will stay away from this because of the RNG, um, I feel like there's going to be a niche group of players that are willing to run that and willing to roll the dice to possibly cheese out a game. G-Max Volt Crash, an electric type uh, move used by Pikachu. It paralyzes opponents. Pikachu's bad. This move's great, but Pikachu's bad. It's just bad. Uh, it has awful stats. However, if you attach a light ball to it, you could deal some pretty insane damage. I'm not going to lie. Some insane damage with G-Max Volt Crash. And the guaranteed paralysis is really nice. Um, however, I feel like Nuzzle Raichu will accomplish the same thing without wasting a Gigantamax slot. So that's something. G-Max Gold Rush. We're not even going to talk about Meowth. He's bad. Uh, G-Max Cheese Strike, a fighting, type used, a fighting type move used by Machamp. It raises the chance of critical hits. I don't believe this one will be all that viable either. I feel like just being able to use a max knuckle is a little bit more important. Uh, that will allow you to raise your attack stat, you know, every time you go for it. And once you're done being Gigantamax, you can start going for really powerful moves like Drain Punch. And yeah, he doesn't benefit too much from that. Maybe if you ran like a Razor Claw set, uh, then you can get crits on all of your all of your max moves after that turn. But yeah, I don't find that I don't find that one too threatening. G-Max Terror, a ghost type attack used by Gigantamax Gengar. This Pokemon steps on the opposing Pokemon shadow to prevent them from escaping. This one could be huge. I think Gigantamax Gengar has a lot of potential in the format, mostly because it loses its ability to trap things in uh, since its Mega is gone. It used to have Shadow Tag. But you can put yourself in a position where you're playing sort of a control team with Gigantamax Gengar as the central trapper. Or not even a central trapper, you could have Gothitelle as your trapper, but Gigantamax Gengar will be able to be sort of a, oh, hey, I want to switch out my Gothitelle, let me G-Max and go for Max Terror here and switch it out for like an Intimidate user like Arcanine and Intimidate them, lower their stats and make it so they can't reset it because they're trapped in here. So I could see maybe Control Gengar being a thing, which isn't something that is... It, it wasn't something I'd expect to say going into the format. Uh, G-Max Resonance, an ice type attack uh, that Lapras can use. It reduces the damage received for five turns. Lapras is disgusting. I want to use G-Max Lapras because it is essentially just Aurora Veil. It is Aurora Veil. You get free Aurora Veil just for clicking the move, and it does really great damage, and it's an ice type move, one of the best offensive typings in the game. Gigantamax Lapras could be the, the most busted Pokemon in the format if provided the proper support, like a Lightning Rod user or a Sap Sipper. It would just be mm, beautiful. Uh, so screens offense is definitely going to be a thing. On top of that, with the lights, with the light screen and reflect up, or I guess Aurora Veil, uh, you're taking less from the opponent's max moves, making it so they could completely waste their max moves by just trying to cut through your defenses when you have these screens up and they're not getting much done. So that's why I, I really enjoy screen offense in the current format. And, you know, Labrys could be the face of that. Right now, it's Grim Snarl, but that's besides the point. Next up, we have G-Max Cuddle. It's an Eevee move, and it's bad. It just infatuates Pokemon. Um, I guess maybe if you're running, like, Adaptability Eevee, this could be okay. But I feel like Eevee isn't the most viable in the first place. G-Max Replenish, a normal type attack used by Snorlax. This move restores berries when eaten. Now, most people thought this was going to be busted. People thought this was going to be busted because you could belly drum Snorlax and you could get your berries back over and over again. But fun fact, someone on Twitter actually recently tested this and it turns out that the effect of this move is completely random. You might get your berry back, you might not. So you can't reliably use the move to get your berries back. However, it still is a really good move and it could turn the tide of a game in your favor. Next up, we have G-Max Malador, Garbodor's move. 
poison type attack, uh, and it poisons the opponents. Honestly, not that bad. It's not that bad. I could see this possibly being used, uh, but it would have to be used on sort of a bulky team that really enjoys having uh, the ability to stall out a couple of turns, protect every other turn, and let their opponents take that chip damage. Uh, and because it's regular poison, it's not badly poisoned, uh, they're going to be taking the same amount each turn. And it's a decent chunk after a few turns, so that's something. Uh, GMAX Stone Surge. I legitimately think that Dreadnought is going to be one of the worst Gigantamax Pokemon. It sets up Stealth Rocks. It's a water type move that sets up Stealth Rocks. And Hazards have never been important in VGC. They can they can make or break a game. I mean, if you're facing a lot of Flying Fire types or like a full Flying type team. And yes, they can break Focus Sashes, but uh, because... De or because... Ro I can't think of the word. Protect. Because Protect is such an important move in VGC, defensive switches aren't needed nearly as much as in singles. That's why Hazards are so important in singles. If you can get a really good play by switching out your Pokemon into something that can absorb a hit, then you know, you're fine. But if there are rocks in the field, you're a little more intimidated for going for that because you're going to take chip damage, possibly lose a focus sash. And while that does apply to VGC, you can always just click protect instead, you know? So it's not as important. I feel like being able to set up the rain uh, for itself and get that swift swim off is much more important. G-Max Wind Rage, a flying type attack for Corviknight to use. It removes the effects of reflect and light screen. That could be important. Screen's offense is really, really good. And, you know, with Lapras running around, you can just counter that thing entirely. Lapras won't be doing too much damage to Corviknight, given how specially defensive they run those things, and given how well it takes physical hits in the first place. So whether it's physical or special Lapras, it's not doing too much to Corviknight. So I could see that being important. However, I feel like the speed increase for your entire team is also really, really good. So it's all it's all reliant on what team you're using, but I feel like uh, GMAX Corviknight will find a niche in the format. However it's going to be more likely regular Corviknight. Max Stun Shock. This is Toxtricities. It poisons or paralyzes the opponents. Once again, a 50-50, but neither of the 50-50s is all that bad. Both of them are really good. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I would. I don't like rolling the dice in my moves, but if you're gonna if you're gonna use you know a 50-50 move like this, I would I would probably use it. Um, you could get the important. Paralysis on a fast Pokemon, something that has Tailwind up. You get the poison off on something that's stalling you out. Like, uh, I don't know, Eevee like Corsola. It doesn't have any really good recovery besides Strength Sap. So that could be important, but uh, I feel like Toxtricity, it, it's going to find a couple of teams, but it's definitely not going to be a top tier Gigantamax. GMAX Finale. Now this one, this one's top tier. A Fairy type attack for Alchemy to use. This move heals the HP of allies. I'm not sure exactly by how much. I think it's like 25% or uh, or if it's like a chunk of HP, sort of like Giga Drain. But just being able to heal your allies by going for an attack is really huge. And there's not much more to say about it in that sense. You could run a very bulky offense team with Alcremi as the center. And if you Gigantamax and go for that move, you can allow your other Pokemon to live hits and just make or break a game. It's really nice. G-Max Depletion, the opposite of G-Max Replenish. Dragon type move used by Duraludon reduces the PP of the last move used. I don't see it being that great. Uh, I mean, you could completely just remove Gyro Ball from Ferrothorn, given it only has like 5 to 8 PP, I believe. So if you use it at the right time, you could remove that option for Ferrothorn to actually hit your fairy type. But besides that, um, there are only a couple of moves where I feel like it would make a big difference. So it could be used. It's not the best. GMAX Gravitas. It is Orbital's move, and it it affects gravity for five turns. That basically makes it so moves are more accurate, and um, Pokemon all the Pokemon are touching the ground. This one can honestly be amazing. It makes it so Hypnosis hits more reliably, Sleep Powder hits more reliably, you won't miss a Rock Slide, and Flying types can be hit by Earthquake. You can like KO a Charizard with an Earthquake here. You can KO a Rotom Wash with an Earthquake, a Rotom Heat. I honestly think Orbital might be one of the better Gigantamax Pokemon. While bug types aren't really notoriously aren't really notorious for being good at VGC, um, given this one having such unique typing and bug psychic, this could be a really great Gigantamax Pokemon. I expect good things out of it. Gmax Vocalith. <laughs> yeah, Gmax Vocalith. Uh, it's Colossal's move and it continues to deal damage for four turns. So it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like Charizard's move but I still think that that's not the best one. I feel like the sand from your regular rock type move will get you more more, uh, more mileage. 
Gmax snooze. Dangerous. It is Grim Snarl's move, and it lets out a huge Dion. It targets, uh, it lulls the targets into falling asleep on the next turn. So it it affects the Pokemon with the Yawn. So basically, if they stay in next turn, they'll fall asleep. If they switch out, they're fine. However, more testing has been done on this. Once again, it doesn't always come out. It's a lot like Gmax Replenish. There's no guarantee of it. However, I do think it could be worth using uh, if used on the right turn, and you do get lucky enough to get it, then. You could force a Pokemon that's been setting up for a few turns to switch out. You could also force a Pokemon that doesn't want to switch out to be asleep for the next couple of turns. So that's really, really cool. Or you could even force a Pokemon. If you know that like the opponent doesn't want to lose this particular Pokemon in the field, and there is a Pokemon in the back that you expect them to switch in, you could go for that prediction and KO it, which is really nice. So you can get a lot of momentum from that move. Uh, G-Max Grimmsnarl could be really good. G-Max Tartness. This is... The Gigantamax Flapple move, it reduces the opponent's evasiveness. Not the uh, not the best. I feel like regular G -Max, or regular Dynamax would be better. G-Max Sweetness, and it heals the status conditions of allies. Um, It could be good. It could be good. Uh, we don't know if it heals everything, I don't think. Or if it heals like everything on the field, then that's okay. But if it heals everything in your party, that would be even better. I'm not sure how, how that one works yet. Uh, I haven't seen anyone use it yet. But, uh... It, it could be okay. It's sort of in the same... It's in the same boat as Flapples. G-Max Smite. Fairy type attack for Hatterene to use. Confuses opponents. Scary. Very scary. Uh, the confusion could really screw people over. It's. I think you have a 30% chance to hit yourself when you're confused. So that could definitely make or break a game. But it would make a lot of salty people too. So I don't know how many people will be willing to abuse that. G-Max Steel Surge. This is Kaparaja's move. And it lays sharp spikes in the field. These aren't like regular spikes, they're essentially steel type stealth rocks. It could be good, once again hazards aren't all that great, and Kaparaja raising its low defenses. It has high HP, right? But it has low defenses. So I think steel um I think steel spike is still a little bit better. But yeah. G Max Meltdown. This is Melmetal's move. Uh, he is not legal. G Max Foam Burst. Water type attack for Kingler to use. This move harshly lowers the speed of opponents. That could be actually really viable. It's just a really strong icy wind that well for one it's like a really powerful water type attack that hits one thing and lowers the speed of both opponents that's huge it's probably the best speed control in the game granted you're only able to use it three times maximum you could use it less so that one i honestly expect to be kind of good except the pokemon that's using it is kingler so maybe not g max sense inferno fire type attack for sense scorch to use this move traps opponents in flames for four to five turns traps you literally cannot switch it's like fire spin that could be really good. Maybe control Senta Scorch. Uh, sort of in the same boat as Gengar, except you're doing damage each turn. I don't know if it'll be all that great. I feel like it'd be okay. But um, that's one of the G-Max Pokemon I would expect to see. I If I see a Senta Scorch, I'll probably assume G-Max first, rather than assuming it's a regular. Where other Pokemon like other Pokemon like um, G-Max Dreadnought, I, I wouldn't expect to see. Yeah, those are my thoughts on all the max moves and on the rule set that's been announced. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I'd really appreciate it, and I'll be putting out an, a VGC Intimidator tier list for you later on today. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, leave a like, subscribe, and join the Discord. Everything's linked in the description. I have a Twitch channel. I have a Twitter. I have a Discord. Join all of that. But yeah, with that, I'm going to call it, guys. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.